morning and welcome back to our off-grid shipping container project. Today I'm making a massive upgrade to our electrical system with additional batteries and solar panels, which is going to basically double our capacity and make my life so much easier. But first we gotta get a couple snow chores done because we have like half a foot of snow and the chickens in our coop just do not like snow. Plus the water I give them freezes every single day. So they need fresh water every day. We gotta get the wall tent shoveled off. We gotta get the panels cleaned off. And yeah, let's get to it. Working line German Shepherd incoming in three, two, one. <laughs> There's also been a ton of coyotes around lately. So Freya is, I think, overtired because she has been working overtime to protect the chickens. You have to protect the chickens from Freya and then Freya protects the chickens from the coyotes. So it's a delicate balance, I've learned, because dogs are actually the biggest threat to chickens. I don't know if you knew that or not, but yeah, this is our coop. The chickens hate snow, which is a fun fact I just learned. Pretty good haul. <laughs> The hardest part, honestly, of building off-grid in the winter is just tracking down all of my different tools because I store them in different places. I don't have a workshop or anything yet. And trying to remember where everything is, it all just looks so different under like half a foot, a foot of snow. So let's see if we can find everything we need. I like to drive around because this car has become my workshop. So I actually have most of what I need already in the car. We just got to find the last couple bits and bobs. All right, so the next step in the process is to figure out how to get all four solar panels onto the roof. I'm thinking of mounting them on that clear plastic roof, and I have a couple pressure-treated two-by-sixes that I can use to lay the panels on that, mount those to the wood frame beneath, and just screw straight through the plastic roofing material. As you can see, the roof really doesn't do very much. It's honestly kind of decorative. I feel like there's one little area right in the middle where when it's raining, that area will stay dry, but 80% of the stuff under there just gets wet every single time it rains because with the wind blowing through there, you would need a really large roof to have a dry work area in a storm.
So I think I'm just gonna screw these panels into the roof for now, and I'll have to come back and do the wiring, but I can't leave them up here with the amount of wind we have without screwing them down because I feel like they could just get blown right off the roof. I'm also thinking they're such nice solar panels, I might try and build a rack for them next spring or in the summer because this isn't the optimal place to mount them, but it'll be great for winter just to have a little bit more electricity and not having such a long cable run will also be really nice because that's a ton of work and I think it also decreases the efficiency. So having them really close to the batteries will be super nice and being able to use them like this week instead of waiting for all of the snow to melt and the ground to thaw. <laughs> yeah, it could be a while. So at least now we'll have some electricity generating right here. And yeah, that wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, honestly. Um, they look a little different. I think they did a black rim on these ones. Normally it's silver. I kind of like the black. <laughs> I feel like the wind knows when you're vulnerable and it just like kicks up. Oh. <sighs> what an adventure. Freya, come. All right, today is day two of our solar electrical install. I'm in the process now of trying to track down all of the little tools I need to install the four new batteries we got from Renogy. I need to find this one little tool that you use to make the battery terminal connections. And I thought it was in one place, but it's not there. The snow like makes everything look so different and it becomes more challenging for some reason to find all of my supplies under like a foot and a half of snow. So let's head up to the green box area and see if we can find the tools we need to install these batteries. <sighs> so I've looked in every single box where it should be and it's not there. So now we'll just open every single one in order and see if we can find this little tool. It's not the kind of thing you could buy at a hardware store. They don't have like such niche, useful little products. <laughs> ah. So I spent about three hours looking for the cable crimping tool. I looked everywhere, opened every single green box, and I just couldn't find it. I honestly don't know where it is. So I drove three hours and I bought one. In my defense, it's kind of a hard tool to find because you only use it like extremely rarely when you're wiring like battery cable, which I've only done twice over the course of this entire homestead build. So yeah, one day I'm gonna have a workshop and I'm gonna have a big, beautiful wall and I'm gonna store every single tool in there and I'm gonna build a spreadsheet with an itemized list of everything, including photos of what I own. And then you'll just be able to search in a catalog and the catalog will tell you exactly where your tool is. But that's just a long dream away. These shipping containers were actually supposed to be a workshop and then they turned into a house. And yeah, I'm actually currently building a workshop that has also somehow turned into a house all over again, so. <laughs> We got our couch opened up. This looks complicated. It's actually very, very simple. We have a solar inverter charger, 48 volt, a couple different fuses, one big fuse, and the old batteries. As you can see, they got significantly smaller, narrow and a little bit higher, but these ones were enormous. This is the same amount of power, I think. Pretty cool. So we got plenty of space over here for the new ones because they got so much smaller. 
So Renogy sent us four new solar panels, but they also sent us four new batteries, which I'm really excited about because the way our system currently works with the four batteries we have is since the sun doesn't hit the solar panels till like 10 or 11 in the morning in the winter, there are a lot of days where we have to run the generator first thing. I usually wake up at like five and I'll run the generator for a couple hours just to top up the batteries until the sun hits the panels. But with the four new ones, those types of days will be gone. So I'm gonna install these batteries in the couch where the other four batteries are. And when me and our friend Carmel designed this couch in Rhino, we actually spaced it so that it would fit eight batteries because I read in the manual that you can pair a total of eight of these lithium batteries together. So that's kind of always been my goal. I kind of view these shipping containers as like a big performance design studio for our future house build. Yeah, one of the things I learned on this process is you definitely wanna decouple solar from heat because we have three mini splits on these shipping containers and in the summer, it's great to have air conditioning because you'll have the maximum amount of sunlight and the air conditioning doesn't actually take that much electricity. So you can heat, basically cool all three containers at the same time and still be gaining electricity with our setup. But in the winter, coupling heat with Solar is a really, really bad idea because you need the most amount of electricity you could possibly be using at the time of year when you have the least amount of sunlight. So it doesn't work at all, which is why when we build our house, I'm not gonna do any sort of reliance on solar for heat. I think I'm gonna do propane with radiant floor heating because it's just so much more efficient. And the really cool thing with the radiant floor systems is in the future, if somehow, technology improves or batteries become cheaper or solar panels become cheaper. I think honestly the solar panels can't become too much cheaper, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement when it comes to the battery technology. But you could just switch out your propane radiant floor system for an electric solar powered radiant floor system because the pipes in the ground will stay the same. All that changes is the unit that powers the heating of the hot water and you could even have two systems running at the same time where it kind of alternates. All right, so I got the batteries fully charged and I'm taking a little while because you have to charge each one individually and then it wants, the manual wants you to put them all in parallel and wait 12 to 24 hours for the system to balance itself out. So it's kind of a time consuming process, but we're all set now. The system seems to be working and we can reassemble our couch Honestly, kind of incredible that there's an entire power station inside a couch. I feel like we're living in the future. Panels are on the roof and my life just got so much easier not having to run the generator all the time, especially like going into town to go fill up the fuel jugs and the noise that comes with it. It's gonna be so, so nice having double the storage capacity. I was talking with a friend of ours in the area about like how to design solar systems for this climate, because I feel like so much of the like information about solar is based on like California, Arizona, that whole climate where you just have so much sunlight. And I feel like the solution in this climate, like a cloudy, dark, gray, cold climate is to size your system so you actually have enough solar panels to be generating electricity on a dark, cloudy day. Maybe not to like full power, but rather than have a really large battery bank, I think it would make sense to actually have a medium, small battery bank and a really large solar field, like disproportionately large, so that even on suboptimal days, you can still generate electricity because the biggest battery bank in the world isn't gonna help you if the sun doesn't shine for three weeks, which it definitely can around here. So yeah, just a thought. Thank you so much for watching this video and for all of your beautiful comments and support. We really appreciate it.